Let's talk about kids, shall we? Um, I don't know about you, but it does seem to me that things are getting worse when it becomes around uh, violence, that children seem to be uh, perpetrating not just against each other, but against adults. For example, there was the murder uh, of Ian Kerwan. He uh, confronted a gang of kids, teenagers outside a supermarket. He ended up getting stabbed and killed. And it's not, it seems to be happening this more often than it should be. Alex, well, and I, I know people fight, that's what they do, but as is often, it worse? As often as it should be, it should, of course, be zero. But sadly, you know, I, and it's been years since I've um, practised at the bar, but it's a, a therefore useful historical comparison that when I was prosecuting and defending offences, these sorts of things were not unknown, perhaps not as common, mm -hmm. but not certainly not unprecedented. I think that the main thing is the thrust of, of why this is so salient is what you were saying in your introduction about the frequency of these events. And you'll recall um, on an earlier episode of your show, we watched um, aghast as there was footage of a basic riot uh, in a fast food restaurant where the patrons, the other patrons were terrified mm. at what was going on. I saw yesterday and today footage of one uh, young woman in a school punching another to the ground and then repeatedly kicking her victim in the head. In, a, in and, Scotland. In Scotland. Yeah. And, and these kinds of things, I'm, sadly, are happening more and more often. And the severity, I think, has also escalated. So whilst it's not, you know, people have carried what in the law people call bladed articles, knives, uh, for a long, long time, uh, obviously. Um, this poor man, Ian Kewan, who was um, trying to remonstrate with children, uh, boys who are misbehaving, where once he might have been mocked, <coughs> where once he might have been slapped or punched, he is instead stabbed because somebody took a knife uh, with them from Birmingham to Redditch to go and make trouble for people um, who lived there and were shopping there. And so... Um, it seems to me that we're getting something wrong. I don't think what we're getting wrong is sentencing policy. We're sentencing people for longer and we're sentencing uh, people um, I people who've been committed, uh, committed to these kinds of offences uh, more frequently. So I don't think it's that. I think that it's we, we're not sending the message to people that they're going to get caught in the first place or that they're going to be punished well, in the first place. Well, the supermarket murder that we're talking about at the moment, just so everyone's aware, a 15-year-old um, has been found guilty uh, of uh, murdering an engineer. Uh, jurors cleared three of the other youths. Two were 14 years old, one was 16. Uh, it basically found them guilty of violent disorder. In this case, uh, it was said uh, that the chap was in an unfortunate member of the public in the wrong place at the wrong time. This was just a fella going to a shop. That's not the wrong place. You know, there shouldn't be such a thing as, oh, you better not do that, you better not go there because you, you're heading for a kick-in. I mean, come on. And well, I think the danger is that actually we become inured to it. I mean, once upon a time, I think these sorts of stories, a 14, 15-year-old stabbing a grown man in his 40s or 50s or whatever, um, I think would have been... There would have been a huge national debate on that once upon a time, I think. It would have been front-page news, it would have been all over the broadcast media, and the story would have run and run for days. I think now when something like that happens, there is a bit of a debate, there is a bit of an outcry, and then the bandwagon moves on and people forget about it until the next one comes along in a week's time or in two weeks' time. I mean, it, it's easy to, to kind of be moralistic about these sorts of questions, but I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing sometimes because I think the frequency of these types of incidents where teenagers, 14, 15-year-olds, are getting involved in such serious crimes, murder, um, the frequency is much more than I think it was once upon a time. I think it's partly a moral question. I think there has been a breaking down of the, the universal moral code, I think, that once, once existed in this country. And I think partly... That's as a result of the breakdown of, of family. I think it's partly as a result of the breakdown of a sense of community and a sense of belonging. I think we live in a much more sort of fragmented and atomised world now where people don't have that socialisation. They don't feel that sense of obligation, that sense of duty to, to their neighbour, think they can go out and, and act as they like. I think it's partly a police question as well, actually. I think the, the general ineffectiveness of the... The fact that the police have abandoned the streets, there isn't the kind of intelligence-led community policing that there was once upon a time. I think all of those factors have resulted in a situation where we've almost now, as a society, accepted, well, this is custom and practice now, so we might as well just become used to it. And I think that's tragic. A theme that's coming through on my inbox is the word discipline. And so many oh. people, I read out that one at the start, where someone's bringing uh, bring back the birch, whatever. There seems to be a sense, certainly in my inbox, that discipline has just 
crumbled, and yeah. that is what's gone wrong. There's something at the heart of society that is awry, isn't there, when children um, kill like this? And, and it goes, I think, beyond the fact that um, they are encouraged, perhaps, by the culture around them to posture and to think that they can do whatever they like. See, it, it's heroes held up in, in television and cinema uh, do things without consequences for themselves. You know, we have this notion of invincibility in so many of the central characters of, of, of the arts, uh, and perhaps that's a, a little to do with it. But I think, more over. Um, discipline is, a, is something that has been eroded for at least 20 years. So Tony Blair said to Michael Howard across the dispatch box, when you and I were at school, if you got in trouble at school, you got in trouble mm. at home. Mm. And that's not true anymore, which is ironic given that Blair did so much to undermine the values that um, brought us to that point. Uh, but he was nevertheless, as so often with Blair, who be a, a wonderful hypocrite, speaks with a forked tongue, but have some real truth to him. That was right. Eh? And, and that, that idea that if you were in trouble at school once, you would, you'd be afraid to tell, go home and tell your yeah, parents yeah, and think, yeah. well, if you got something yeah. that wrong, you were in trouble and with I, and, as well. I, and I think as well, we need to start having uh, an honest debate in this country about the impact of fatherless, fatherless families, about the fact that there are so many homes and so many youngsters are being brought up without that male influence, without that father figure in the home. And I've no doubt, and I think the evidence shows it actually, that where that is the case, the child is more likely to turn to crime, to, to you know, fall right. into taking drugs and things like that. And every time a politician kind of approaches that issue and tries to begin a debate, all of a sudden, you know, the, the hyper-progressive elite in this country say, no, we're not allowed to discuss those sorts of things because what you're doing is you're stigmatising single-parent families. Somebody like David Lammy, for example, um, a Labour MP for, for Tottenham, spoke about the impact in his own constituency of fatherless families, particularly from, from the black community and the impact that that has on the children. And you kind of think, well, actually, there's somebody here brave enough to have a debate about it, but then all Quite of a right. sudden it goes off the that's radar it. because, you know, you get pilloried if you ever try that's to it. raise these issues because, you know, you're attacking single-parent families. But you can have a sensible debate about this without stigmatising people. It's just that as a country we're not brave enough to do it. Frankly. It's his job to have that debate, and that's one of the few things that I like and admire about David Lammy, that he's willing to, to take on uh, that discussion. But I can tell you, it can only be argument, discussion by anecdote, but plenty of the people that I prosecuted or defended... It, it, in court accused of these offences came from broken homes and so did many of their victims. And that's part of the point because this happens at that level for the victims as well as those doing it.